Generally, when we're testing regression for whether or not a relationship exists, the hypothesis test will make the alternative hypothesis not equals to because we're just interested in whether or not a relationship exists, not so much the direction. But on occasion, we are interested in testing if the relationship is specifically positive or specifically negative. So let's look at each of those types of relationships that we could test for. We first could test to see if we have a positive relationship. In other words, we want to know if one variable goes up, does the other go up? An example of this might be if we were comparing temperature versus ice cream sales. We might not be interested in just whether or not there's a relationship between the two. We want to know, is the relationship actually positive? Do higher temperatures result in higher ice cream sales? And so when we do this, when we want a positive relationship, the null hypothesis is still rho equals 0 saying that there's no relationship. But now the alternative hypothesis is going to be rho is greater than 0, indicating that it is positive relationship. And in a very similar way, if we want to test a negative relationship, In other words, we want to test, is it true that if one variable goes up, does the other go down? Do they go in opposite directions? And an example of this might be absences in a class versus grade in the class. We might want to know if absences go up, does the grade go down? If absences go down, does the grade go up? They're going opposite directions. So to test this negative relationship, the null hypothesis would still be rho equals 0, indicating no relationship. And the alternative hypothesis would be that rho is negative, less than 0, meaning we have a negative relationship. Both of these push the hypothesis test into the one tail test, whether it's left tail or right tail. And based on which tail it is in, we'll adjust our command in Excel to calculate the p-value. But other than that, the hypothesis test is pretty much the same. Let's do an example. For example, the following list. Tuition, our x variable, in hundreds, and professor salaries, we'll call those y, in thousands, for nine states. What we might be interested in is, does the data suggest a positive correlation at the alpha equals 0.10 level? In other words, does it seem that instructor salary goes up if tuition goes up? Let's take a look at the data. We're going to have x's and y's. Remember, x is the tuition, y is the professor's salary. So 24.9 at one state gives a salary of 42.7. Tuition at 20.6 gave a salary of 
47.8. Tuition of 24.5 gave a salary of 42.3. Tuition of 27.1 gave a salary of 62.7. Tuition of 26.2 gave a salary of 48.3. Tuition of 19.1 gave a salary of 50.7. Tuition at 40.1 gave a salary of 50.3. Tuition at 22.7 gave a salary of 45.0. And tuition of 33.9 gave a salary of 49.1. I've copied the data here into Excel, and we're going to quickly calculate R, the correlation coefficient, by equals correlate, open a parentheses, select the data for array 1, comma, select the data for array 2, close the parentheses, and when I hit enter, I find out R is equal to 0 0.1873. So I'll add that R of 0.1873 to our data, and then we'll run through the six steps of our hypothesis test. First, the hypotheses. My null hypothesis is that there is no relationship, that rho equals 0. The alternative hypothesis, we're trying to show there's a positive relationship, that it's greater than 0, which means if I draw a picture, It's going to be greater on the right-tailed test. This is a right-tailed test. And we'll keep that in mind when we do the command for the p-value. Next step is to find the test statistic. For our test statistic, we know that is t equals r times the square root of n minus 2 over the square root of 1 minus r squared. So in our case, r is 0.1873 times the square root of 9 minus 2, because there's nine states represented in this table, divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared, which is 0.1873 squared. And when I do that, I get a test statistic of 0 0.5045. That is my test statistic. That's going to let me calculate my p-value. p-value is going to come right off of Excel. On Excel, we can say equals t.dist. And we're going to do .rt, because it's a right-tailed test this time. We'll put our test statistic of 0.5045 in there, comma. And because we have nine states, n equals nine states, the degrees of freedom is 2 less than 9 which is 7. So we have 7 degrees of freedom. And when I do that on Excel, we get a probability of 0.3147. That is my p-value. Again, just trying to keep it all on one screen. I'm going to add a box over here. Continuing to move down, though, e, the decision we're going to make based on that p-value, the p-value we found was 0.3147. The alpha that we wanted to compare it to was 0.10, which means my p-value is larger. Whenever we have a bigger p-value, we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. We failed to get the alternative. We failed to show the relationship is positive, And that is going to lead us to our interpretation. Remember, the interpretation always focuses on the alternative hypothesis. We failed to reject, so we failed to show the alternative hypothesis. So we will say there is not significant evidence at the alpha equals 0.10 level that rho is greater than 0 that instructor salaries and tuition are positively correlated. So we do not have a positive relationship between the two. 
we were not able to show any relationship existed.